Hello party people, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori, thank you so much for being here today. I'm coming to you from the floor of my bedroom. I don't really know what to call this kind of video. Is it advice? Is it chatty? Is it simply a brain dump? I don't know. Honestly, the last few months, I have been feeling very suffocated by life and by social media. Like from July to September, I was feeling pretty anxious about a lot of stuff. My work-life balance was honestly kind of out of whack and my professional goals, my personal goals and my goals for my YouTube channel were stressing me out so much. Um, I wasn't feeling very at peace or very comfortable in my body. And then there were also just like current events and family things that were coming up that were really affecting my mental health and the mental space that I was in. It honestly wasn't until the last few weeks where I've been feeling a little bit better. I've been implementing some different routines into my life and I've also just had like certain mantras and pieces of advice that I've been following that I think have been helping me climb out of this hole. So I wanted to share with all of you some advice in case you're also feeling this way because I know the worst thing about feeling this way is feeling like you're alone in these emotions. So without further ado, let's hop into it. As always, my dogs are in the room, so they are snoring, but let's go. I wrote everything down as I usually do when I have a little bit of a chattier video. The first overarching piece of advice I have is one that you have heard before. It's a cliche, it is evergreen, but it's cliche for a reason. And that is don't compare yourself to other people. Part of my recent funk stemmed from the fact that I was comparing two aspects of myself to other people on social media. I was comparing my physical self and my looks and stuff like that, and also my financial situation to people online. I think what's really interesting about the current landscape of social media is that now not only do we have the opportunity to compare ourselves to friends, family, people outside of those immediate social circles, but we also can compare ourselves to celebrities, to influencers. And I feel like even now the term influencer has changed so frequently that we are essentially comparing ourselves to everyone. Like for example, platforms like Pinterest or TikTok, those are fueled by algorithms and the algorithms are just showing you content that it thinks you will like. I really just wanna take the time to remind you that if you are comparing yourself, especially the way you look or the way you present yourself to the world, to these influencers or to these celebrities, their livelihood depends on their looks. So they are in the extraordinary position where perhaps they were biologically gifted, but they're also in the very privileged position where they can dedicate very important things like time and money to maintaining or changing their physical appearance. I feel like I always have to remind myself of this fact, but once I remember that, I feel like a gear shifts in my head. This is simply the truth. This is not me like bullying influencers. They are spending more of their time, more of their money into their looks because at the end of the day, their looks drastically affect the money that's coming into the bank. You know, I have to remind myself that even though I do content creation, even though I shoot these videos, at the end of the day, I don't make enough money from YouTube or any of my personal socials to like make an income off of this. This is for fun. This is for community building. I really want to build a really like conscious community online. And I have that privilege. I also have the privilege where I have a nine to five that does not depend on my looks. My nine to five depends on the quality of work I've written, on the quality of work I deliver day to day. The way I look on this screen is not really affecting my piggy bank at all. And then when it comes to the financial comparison of it all, I feel like I was comparing myself to like all the you know, hauls I'm seeing online, everyone is buying incredible amounts of makeup or um, books or designer goods. But I also just had to remind myself that everyone is in a different stage of their financial journey. People have different financial goals, but also people have different starting lines for their finances. Honestly, whenever I'm feeling bad about my financial situation, I just have to remember a few things. One, these people could have been born into money. Two, these people could be debt free or not have any debt to pay off. Three, these people could be similar to me and they have some kind of financial help from their parents or from their family. Four is that all the people that are posting all these crazy hauls 
are just presenting it to a camera and then the next day they are returning every product they bought or even more commonly five. Everyone that you're seeing posting these crazy hauls or just showing off their wealth are just in credit card debt. I'm not in glee of people being in debt or anything like that, but I think it's just, it's the reality of the financial situation of people these days. Not everyone's gonna show their struggles or be extremely transparent with their finances online. And honestly, no one should be so transparent with that kind of stuff. Moral of the story, stop comparing yourself to other people. You don't know what they're going through, I guess. And also their circumstances are always different from yours. Okay, moving on. If you're feeling very suffocated by the trials of life, by the cards you have been dealt, by the way your life is just going, my piece of advice is to take time to recognize the patterns in your life and take action. For example, for myself, the one place where I'm really taking action and analyzing right now is my spending habits. I realized that every year there's kind of this ebb and flow of me being on one end of the spectrum, a very conscious consumer, very aware of like the saving goals I have. And then there's the other side of the spectrum where I'm perhaps spending outside of my means and spending a little too much money, a little bit more money than what I should be. In September, I was like, I'm spending a little bit too much money. I'm spending a little bit too much money on new records, on books, on cosmetics. Let me take the time to just go on a low buy month for October to really go back to being the conscious consumer that I know I can be. Okay, I really just lost my train of thought because my dogs started barking. Once I took the time to recognize that I was spending a little bit too much money, I took the action of starting this low buy month. Once I started the low buy month, I realized that I was really just shopping to fill an emotional void. Once I, you know, I realized, okay, the problem lies in that I don't feel great in my body. What are ways I can feel better in my body? And I think it's been working really well. I, and I know that once my low buy month ends at the end of this month, I definitely am gonna continue the habit of creating a wish list before actually purchasing anything. It really helped me determine like, do I actually wanna buy something because I actually really want it? Or am I buying it for like other perhaps subconscious reasons? Like I just want like the dopamine hit from buying something. I just want it so when I have it, I can appear cool to strangers on TikTok or I just wanna buy it because I just wanna do something that will alleviate these like negative feelings I'm feeling. I feel like also when I was in this weird funk, I was feeling like a very passive participant in my life. And I think that this helped me remind myself that I am very much an active participant in my life and I'm the one living it. And I'm also the one creating the environment in which I am living. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> the sun is setting very quickly. So I need to hurry this up. Okay, the third piece of advice I have is to stop chasing the need to be original. And this honestly applies in very specific situations, but this whole concept kind of came as an epiphany to me when I got back from my vacation. I feel like I've talked about this vacation nonstop, but in my defense, it's the reason why I moved home. So you know what, it's, it's my year has rotated around this vacation. But in June, I went to Europe with my friends and my mom and I had an amazing time. And then I swear, the second I landed back on American soil, I got so many TikToks served to me and they were all using very extremely hyperbolic language from travel vloggers, restaurant influencers, and all of the POVs were like, these are the five restaurants you have to try in London or like your vacation isn't complete unless you see these 10 sites in Florence. And honestly, all of these TikToks just made me feel like shit. I, I honestly found myself freaking out and thinking like, oh my God, did I even have a really fun time? Oh my God, I didn't even get to see all of the sites. Oh my God, like what was the point of even going if I didn't have these items on my list to go see? I was, I was very much spiraling, um, but then I kind of came to this conclusion that I was like, wait, I, I need to snap out of it. Like number one, being hyperbolic is all part of these people's jobs. If travel vloggers and restaurant bloggers were not hyperbolic in their recommendations or making you feel inadequate if you don't go, like then they lose their entire source of income. 
And then I realized that this rat race to like be original or to try the latest and greatest or to go to the best hidden gems or find the latest hidden gems is futile because at the end of the day, I don't think that going to an underrated restaurant or going to a hidden gem is actually going to like be any more fulfilling than if you just have like the most amazing, you know, bowl of pasta in a place that maybe is super well known. When I was having this epiphany, I also realized that like, there are so many like hyped up restaurants that I have been to and I have eaten in my life. And I remember them being extremely mediocre. How do I know? I'm just gonna assume all of these are mediocre and this is just everyone trying to get their trek and I appreciate their hustle, but at the end of the day, I am removing myself from this equation. The same concept also applies to like myself as like a content creator, especially as one that makes like fashion related videos. Let me preface by saying, I feel like when it comes to getting like recommendations, especially for like Amazon storefronts, my brain immediately like goes blank. I'm like, I don't even recognize that as an ad. If everything you say to me has been negated by the fact that you are plugging an Amazon storefront, okay? But I started getting so many TikToks served to me of influencers whose whole brand is just finding the most niche Etsy shops, indie brands, and telling their audience that you need to buy them in order to be cool, to be on trend, to be the most fashionable girl in town. And for some reason, those TikToks really got to me because after I saw TikToks where this was a whole girlies brand, I was like, oh my God, it's so much more different than Amazon storefronts because at least these girlies, they're finding these niche small businesses and you're supporting them. I started questioning everything about myself. I was like, am I even that fashionable? Do I even have a pulse on what's happening? Like if I don't know these indie brands, like, or if I don't know any of these like indie fashion designers or fashion labels, how do I, I don't know anything. And that put me on a fashion spiral. There's definitely a drought on my upload schedule, if you can see, where I just did not post anything related to fashion. And I think that was also one of the reasons why. But then I took a step back and I was like, hey, it is great that some of these creators are using their platform and have created a platform to uplift indie brands, to uplift indie designers and artists and things like that. But at the end of the day, that is what fulfills those creators. That does not fulfill me. If anything, that fills me with dread and that fills my brain space with unneeded anxiety over sourcing these names, shopping these names, da 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 da. I need to leave that work to the girlies who find it fulfilling who ha who for, for for whom it is a passion for me that is not a passion for me i want to create this really fun fashion conscious community and i think i have been doing that there is also nothing wrong with not being the first customer of a brand or being the first to talk about a certain brand or a certain designer or a certain artist like I love being a girl's girl. I love loving what all the other girlies are loving. I love talking about and participating in girl, girly girl culture, you know? I really realized, I was like, let's leave the pretentiousness to the film bros who want to say they discovered, you know, an Italian filmmaker from 1960. I also think at the end of the day, like this individuality complex that so many people have in this day and age, this incessant need to be perceived as original by other people or to be perceived as different is ultimately hurting everyone. It's hurting the way we speak about community. It's hurting the way we interact with each other. It's hurting the way we consume. So I don't need to be a part of that. I'm totally fine not being considered original <laughs> in some aspects of my life. You know, like I'm totally fine with like being summed up by a starter pack online. Like sometimes that's fun. And I feel like some people need to hear that. It's okay to not be original all the time. I'm not saying don't have an original thought or don't have an original perspective. There are other ways I think to flex originality outside of consuming things. <laughs> this fourth piece of advice is probably one that I've mentioned before, but that is create more than you consume or consume less than you create. Whichever way you wanna spin that is all right by me. This applies to many different elements of my life. Like, so if I'm spending, you know, five hours dedicated to scrolling on TikTok. Like, am I spending that same amount of time actually executing ideas, researching them, doing whatever? If the answer is no, I need to adjust. And I think the same can also be said for like 
especially with current events like it's so easy to doom scroll these days it's so so easy but if you're taking more time to create and check off actionable items more than you are doom scrolling i think that's great like are you actually reading the articles you said you're gonna read are you actually taking the time to call your senators and to like put in that work and i think when you put into that perspective it's a lot easier to kind of climb out of the doom scrolling habit um but if the answer is no those are some action items for you i think another great thing is just having a conversation with people in your community who are also feeling this type of way. It's so easy to feel the doom and gloom when you think you're the only person carrying this weight. But when you talk to other people who are also engaging themselves, you know, then you feel less alone because you're like, oh right, there's actually this whole community having these discussions, having actionable items. Let me, let me, let me get in on that as well. There is a way out of this little sad suffocating hole. And then my final parting word is another one that is very cliche. But again, sometimes the cliches are just, they hit, you know? And that is touch grass. I say this to you as you're watching me on a screen, but once you are done with this video, I'm begging you, go outside, perhaps take your shoes off and touch grass. I saw that in a Zac Efron documentary and I loved it. But there's a reason why like the running joke is that Victorian children were sent away to the sea to recover. Like connect with nature in any way you can if that's a walk around the neighborhood if that's going to the beach if that's sitting in a park because something about the vitamin d hitting your skin just right something about being in nature with other living things instead of your own personal little cave really does wonders for the mental health you know what i'm saying well that's it for this video the sun is setting so this video is over i hope you enjoyed i don't know if enjoy is the right word but i hope you got something useful and helpful out of this video i will be back with more fashion videos very soon if you want to see more of me feel free to follow me on my socials i'm very much in my active tiktok era but that's it i'll see you for the next one bye